Hey, I'm back. In this video, we're going to talk about the heart in relationship to nutritional deficiencies. One of the problems that you're running into is when you go to the doctor, there's just not enough attention or importance put on food in the relationship to how it affects the body, especially the heart um, or diet. They just don't put attention on that. It's not emphasized enough, but the heart is one of the main uh, muscles of the body that responds to nutrition more than anything else very quickly, okay? And you can do research on each thing I'm talking about um, and find a lot of great data, but mainly I just want to kind of cover uh, some key points here. Number one, arrhythmias. Um, that happens when you have a problem with the pacemaker of the heart. There's a part of the heart, it's, it's a neurological thing that keeps the heart in rhythm and it requires electrolytes. When there's not enough electrolytes, you can have problems with the pacemaker and have all sorts of issues with extra beats, missing beats, a beat that's not in rhythm anymore. All sorts of abnormal heart rhythm problems happen in your body, like atrial fibrillation, for example. Uh, let's first start with calcium. Uh, calcium normally uh, helps you contract muscles, okay? It's involved in a lot of things, but that would be one thing that it does. Let's say, for example, you have too much calcium or not enough calcium, you can have a lot of issues. So calcium deficiency can cause tetany, that little twitch that happens, like maybe right below your left eye, like or in your arm, that's a calcium deficiency. Or if you have too much calcium, that can also create a rhythm problem with the heart as well. Um, so if you're missing magnesium, for example, you could have a leg cramp because magnesium is involved in relaxation of muscle. So you have this contraction of the muscle controlled by the calcium and the relaxation of the muscle controlled by magnesium. They both work together. Now, if you have uh, this thing in the heart where you have lub dub, lub dub, you have this contraction, relaxation, contraction, relaxation, and you have this systolic, diastolic type pressure too. So if you have an imbalance in the systolic and the diastolic, it could be a problem with minerals, or it could be a problem with vitamin B1 because the autonomic nervous system is that system that regulates the heartbeat unconsciously. So it just runs the heartbeat on a certain pattern. So it could be a B1 deficiency. It could be a problem with calcium. Another problem with calcium in general is that if you don't have enough vitamin D3, um, you don't get the absorption of calcium too much because vitamin D3 increases the absorption of calcium by 20 times in the small intestine, okay? Now, vitamin K2 is very, very important too in, in making sure you don't build up too much calcium in the arteries or the other soft tissues like the joints. So you, you need these both together. I recommend a ratio of 10,000 IUs of D3 to 100 micrograms of K2. Okay, I, I like the MK7 version. That's the natural version. So like if you have a big problem with calcium, that's clogging up the arteries and things, I would recommend taking uh, these ratios like maybe times 4x in a given day. If you have a mild problem or you want to maintain it, you can just take a um, like a 10,000 IUs to 100 microgram ratio. Now, as far as the pH goes, if your pH is too alkaline, you can't transport calcium too well. Uh, the calcium doesn't really uh, move that well. So you need a, an acidic pH to transport calcium. So again, even the pH can alter the transportation of minerals. Um, the acid level in your stomach controls the absorption of minerals too. So that could be another problem. There's another condition um, where you have nanobacteria. Nanobacteria is a very small little microbe that lives in a little calcium shell and it can um, hide out in your heart, in your kidney, in your mouth. And if you look up nanobacteria and placking in the arteries, you'll find a whole bunch of data, okay? They're finding now with these new microscopes that there's um, microbes in the calcium. And the, the, probably the reason why the calcium is there is one of the reasons is the microbe uh, is attracting the calcium to protect it so it can hide as a stealth mechanism so you can't find it. So in that case, you'd want something to dissolve that calcium placking, like uh, a good chelator. EDTA is a really good one. I highly recommend it because that's a powerful calcium chelator. It also pulls out heavy metals. It's great for cardiovascular issues. Also, um, if you had a stroke and you wanna get the arteries cleaned up, it's a really great uh, product, well-researched. You can look it up, it's called EDTA. Um, but if you dissolve the calcium shell, 
um, and you want to kill the nanobacteria, you want to use things like oregano oil, clove, things like that, that actually are like a natural herbal uh, antibiotic without the side effects. Now, if you're low on sodium, you can feel very, very weak, okay? And if you have too much sodium, your blood pressure goes up. Let's say you have a lot of refined foods and no vegetables. You're going to have a lot of sodium, very low potassium, and you're going to be waterlogged. You're going to have swelling and edema all over the place. So we need some salt, but we don't need like way more than the other mineral called potassium. So we need a balance there. But here's the thing. If you're in a low salt diet or if you're trying to so-called lower your blood pressure and you cut out the salt, okay, and you're drinking a lot of water, <laughs> now we dilute that electrolyte and it's called hyponatremia. And now we actually get all sorts of other health problems because we're becoming more dehydrated by drinking water because we don't have the electrolytes as a solution. Uh, what hydrates you is not water, it's fluids. You need a combination of water and electrolytes at the same time because when you drink pure water or even distilled water, whatever, and you're peeing out urine, the urine has a lot of electrolytes, but the water has very few. So you create this imbalance if you drink too much water and you don't have enough sodium. Just a point to research. Magnesium is very, very important in muscle, preventing muscle cramps. It's also important in helping you relax. It's important in key enzymes to help in probably 600 different chemical reactions in the body. Um, you get a lot of magnesium in chlorophyll, which happens to be the green in the plants, the vegetables that you're consuming, uh, which I'm assuming that you're consuming at least seven cups a day, you're going to get enough magnesium from that. But also you need the potassium, which also comes from the same source, the vegetables. So if you consume enough vegetables, like seven to 10 cups, you'll get, you'll kill both of these birds with one stone. You need a lot more uh, potassium than magnesium though. But the problem is you're going to be worried about getting enough of it because you need 4,700 milligrams. That's a lot. You need it for the electrical uh, conductivity of the, the nervous system and the muscle. So if you're deficient in this, you can definitely have rhythm problems in the heart, atrial fibrillation, and all sorts of things. But most of the potassium is stored inside the cell, not outside the cell. So when you get your blood tested <laughs> and it shows normal, that doesn't mean anything because they're not actually testing intracellular potassium. That's a special test. The point I'm making is just to bring your awareness up of all the different factors. Um, so you're not like worried about it, but you're just eating healthy. And, and now you know why you should eat healthy because of these reasons. You're, pre you're preventing a lot of issues. Not necessarily to test every little thing, but just to know the connection. Your pulse rate can go high if your potassium goes down. Potassium um, actually helps lower blood pressure and lower the pulse rate. So when you don't have enough potassium, it can go up. Okay, you can have high blood pressure if you're low on magnesium too. Insulin resistance is a condition where the cell can't really absorb the minerals too well anymore. And you start developing all sorts of issues within the arteries like um, damaged artery walls, and then comes the calcium, you, your arteries will get stiff. So you can start developing conditions, hardening of the arteries, uh, arterial sclerosis, things like that. And uh, what you have to do is you have to get to the source, cut down the carbs, don't eat so frequently. I have the videos down below if this is your first video, but it's probably not. So you probably know all about it. But if you don't, there's a link down below. Insulin resistance is like a real big problem. People take diuretics for high blood pressure, but what happens is that they it pulls out sodium and potassium. Well, we need to keep the potassium. Um, one thing you might want to do is it really increase your potassium as a primary way of of helping you lower this with a lot of vegetables. It, it, it may just work. Okay, angina. This is a situation where you get the heart that cramps, okay? You have a heart attack, the heart cramps. One key vitamin could be responsible, and that's vitamin E. Vitamin E is very, very important in keeping the heart from cramping, keeping the oxygen up in the muscle. So if you're deficient in vitamin E, um, the amount of oxygen goes way down in the muscle, so it's very susceptible to getting cramps. And so you want to make sure you take a whole food vitamin complex or just consume foods that are high in vitamin E, like seeds and nuts and vegetables, things like that. This is a fat-soluble vitamin now. Um, so that could be one trigger. Uh, placking usually develops after a lesion or an oxidative problem with the artery wall because the person is consuming too much sugar, okay? Uh, or they get exposed to iron, which is like rust, and then what happens, because sugar or glucose 
is very similar in the chemistry to vitamin C, by the way, they're very similar. If there's glucose in the system, it will absorb that and not vitamin C. And therefore, you're going to create a deficiency of vitamin C. So if given the choice, the body will take priority from glucose. So now if you don't have enough vitamin C, the antioxidant, the protective factor, you get oxidation damage to the artery wall. And then comes the calcium, and then comes the cholesterol as a band-aid to plaque it, and you start getting a clogged artery. Heart attacks, for example, um, a lot of times they can occur during stress events because the adrenal triggers them. The adrenal hormone called adrenaline, which is produced by the inside of the adrenal, has one function of vasodilating um, the coronary artery. That's the main blood supply to the heart itself, okay? So if that artery doesn't vasodilate to get more blood flow, let's say you're under stress, it's supposed to open up to handle the new blood flow that is happening when you're being chased by a tiger so you can get out there so you have more blood flow to the heart. If that artery doesn't open up and it constricts because your adrenals are burnt out, boom, another heart attack, especially if there's placking in there. So there's, there's a lot of crossover here. Uh, vitamin B1 is really important in preventing the heart from enlarging. There's something called cardiomegaly where the heart enlarges if it doesn't have enough B1. Also, the pulse rate will go up if you don't have B1. A lot of uh, respiratory problems and breathing problems where you don't have B1 as well. Vitamin B2 and B3 and even B6 are also involved in helping the artery vasodilate as well. Um, so some of the B vitamins help the arteries uh, constrict and some vasodilate. Um, but if you're deficient in these two, you may have more vasoconstriction contributing to this heart attack right here. And by the way, vitamin B3, which is niacin, helps to keep cholesterol in check as well. But if you're doing a lot of sugar and the, and the sugar is being converted to cholesterol, okay, vitamin B3 won't even touch it, okay? It won't even affect it. So you really need to clean up the sugar to, to handle your cholesterol fully. All right, so I hope I increased your awareness on the relationship between nutrients and heart health. Thanks for watching. So I want to know about what you think about this video. So please comment below and tell me what you think.